Good morning and welcome to this service of Holy Communion from St Mary's in Somerset. Today we celebrate Trinity Sunday, the Sunday that has many preachers scratching their heads wondering how they can put into words what is in reality a mystery. A mystery not in the sense of a riddle, but rather that which is essentially beyond comprehension. That we believe in one God who exists as three distinct persons, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. There are, of course, ways in which we seek to reconcile this truth, but I will not be doing so for you today. Instead, the Reverend Dr. Raywin Whiteley, the assistant priest here, will be joining us later from her garden to open God's word for us. Some of the hymns that we will hear today are sung by the choir of St. Martin in the Fields, and Jane and Charlotte Kennedy will also be joining us from their homes uh, as members of our sister church, St. James in Riddlesdale. And we have David Thomas, our director of music, who will be playing the organ throughout the service and at the end uh, play a voluntary. We're going to begin our service this morning then with a hymn, Crown Him With Many Crowns, from Jane and Charlotte Kent. My sisters and brothers, as we prepare to celebrate the presence of Christ with us in word and sacrament, let us call to mind and confess our sins. God of mercy, we acknowledge that we are all sinners. We turn from the wrong that we have thought and said and done, and are mindful of all that we have failed to do. For the sake of Jesus who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and help us to live each day 
in the light of Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. steadfast in this faith that we may evermore be defended from all adversities through Jesus Christ your son our Lord who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God now and forever amen we have our readings A reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, beginning at verse 12. Who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand, and marked off the heavens with a span, enclosed the dust of the earth in a measure, and weighed the mountains in scales and the hills in a balance? Who has measured the spirit of the Lord, or what man shows him his counsel? Whom did he consult, and who made him understand? Who taught him the path of justice, and taught him knowledge, and showed him the way of understanding? Behold, the nations are like a drop from a bucket, and are accounted as the dust on the scales. Behold, he takes up the coastlands like fine dust. Lebanon would not suffice for fuel, nor are its beasts enough for burnt offering. All the nations are as nothing before him. They are accounted for by him as less than nothing and emptiness. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, 
and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint nor grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youths shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Our psalm today is Psalm 8. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens, out of the mouth of babies and infants. You have established strength because of your foes to still the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is the man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you care for him? Yet you have made him a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned him with glory and honour. You have given him dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the heavens and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. A reading from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 13, beginning at verse 11. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As we prepare to hear the words of our gospel reading, we're going to have our next hymn. We have a gospel to proclaim. Tell of that glorious 
went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always, to the end of the age. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Once upon a time, there were three bears. Once upon a time, there was a little girl and her name was Red Riding Hood. Once upon a time, there were three little pigs. So begin all fairy tales and we hear those magical words once upon a time and know that we're about to be ushered into a magical world where none of the rules apply, where frogs can talk and bears eat porridge and everything ends happily ever after. The stories of our childhood, the stories which shaped our world, tie us to the parents who sat by our beds, reading in the yellow glow of the lamp, and their parents, and their parents before them. These stories have a special way of beginning and we all know what to expect. And today we hear once again another story Another story which shapes us, which ties us to the people who first told us and the people before them and the people before them and so on and so on. Today our story begins, in the beginning God created. Not once upon a time, but in the beginning before all time began. There in the darkness is God. The earth is formless and void, nothing moves, nothing shines, nothing sees, and there is God. Most of us rush on with the story, rush on to the day and the night, the earth and the sky, the sun, moon and stars, and the earth as we know it. We rush on to plants and animals and the human race and speculations and arguments about creation and evolution and how it is that our science and our religion fit together. But all the while, there is God, alone in the darkness. And then God stirs. A wind from God swept over the face of the waters and God spoke. A wind from God, spirit, breath, a voice from God, and all things came to be. A new world full of light and movement and song, like a bright spring morning after rain. God exhales and speaks breath and life into all of creation. Breath into all creation and breath and speech into you and me. There is no doubt, God is here. The disciples were together again, Matthew tells us, one dead, dead by his own hand, 
11 left, but none quite sure if the rumours and the visions had enough truth in them to outweigh the evidence of their own eyes, the stench of death, the cry of abandonment, that last rasping breath. It was dark. Not this time the darkness of a starless sky, but the darkness of a death, a death which tore the world open, a death which tore the very hearts of his friends. Together again in the darkness, the disciples see a figure and wonder, hear the whisper of a voice and know that it is true. Jesus is here again, risen, alive, go, disciple, baptize, teach, I am with you. His words give them new words. Make friends and introduce them to your friend who died and is alive. Pour water on them so that they know what it is to be cleansed and healed and forgiven. Tell them about the God who loves them beyond their deepest dreams. And when John tells the same story, the words come with a breath, a breath from God. God in Christ exhales and speaks the breath of new life and new speech into his followers, into you and into me. There is no doubt, God is here. It's not so much later that the disciples are together again. This time, there are more of them, and the darkness is not so intense. Though the waiting still confuses them, the fear still consumes them, they still don't know what it means to follow a dead and risen Saviour, who is still gone. They stand and wait and pray and wonder. And then comes from nowhere a breath of wind, at first so gentle that it seems hardly real, then stronger and wilder until there can be no doubt that the breath of God has come again, come like that first wind of creation. And this time the speech comes from their very own mouths, the words of God into every language for every person. And all around them, the Parthians and the Medes, the Elamites and the Cappadocians, Italian and Greek and Egyptian, men and women, black and white, young and old, all hear the voice of God as they have never heard it before. God exhales and speaks breath and words for all people, breath and words for you and for me. There is no doubt, God is here. Years pass, years upon years. The breath of God seems just a distant memory. The disciples, the followers of Christ, gather again. Another room, another city. They're a mixed bunch by now. They come from different places, believe different things. Some of them have been gathering there for years. Others are brand new. And then, then the virus comes. And those people are scattered again. So the only way they can be together is online. And yet, we are here. As the darkness gathers around us, just as it did around those disciples so many years ago, we are here, separate, but together. And we are surrounded by darkness. The darkness of a world that seems to be in chaos. An insidious virus threatening us all. And on top of that, racial violence and injustice spilling out across our land and across our world. And then there are the more personal darknesses, broken relationships, bodies we can no longer depend on, loneliness, 
isolation and the fear of death. Sometimes it seems as if the darkness might overwhelm us. But God is here. God is here and the exhale of God, the breath and life and speech, maybe not so much that fierce and roaring wind of a storm as the feather soft touch of a breeze on a warm spring day or the gentle holy kiss of a dear friend. God exhales and speaks breath and words, breath and words into you and into me, for you and for me. In the beginning, God. 2,000 years ago, God. Here today, God. There is no doubt, God is here. say together the words of the creed. We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, 
who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And so with faith and love and in union with Christ, let us offer our prayers before the throne of God's grace. The response to God of mystery and compassion is you know us and you love us. God of mystery and compassion, you know us and you love us. We bring before you, O God, the needs of the church in its weakness and in its potential. Revive and refresh us teach and direct us. Inspire all who preach and teach the good news of Jesus and uphold all who suffer for their faith in any way. God of mystery and compassion, you know us and you love us. We bring before you, O God, the particular problems of our age and our culture. Lord, renew us in a commitment to your community and mutual trust. Give a sense of value to all who despise others and themselves. Protect the vulnerable and sensitize the hearts of all who have become anaesthetized by images of violence. God of mystery and compassion, you know us and you love us. We bring before you, O God, the nurturing of our children and young people in homes and parenting, schools and teaching, in the expectations, pressures and dangers, in the hopes and possibilities for good. God of mystery and compassion, you know us and you love us. We bring before you, O God, the hungry and malnourished, the greedy and the complacent, those who are unwell and those who care for them, the unhappy and those who comfort them, all those who are undergoing surgery, all treatment in hospital, and all those who have no one to turn to. God of mystery and compassion, you know us and you love us. We bring before you, O oh God, our lives and all that we are, including our successes and our failures. We thank you for the gift of life and ask that we may get to know you more deeply day after day. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy and peace. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you which earth has given, and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord. All that you reveal of your glory, the same we believe of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, without any difference or inequality. We, your Holy Church, acclaim you, Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. Three persons we adore, one in being and equal in majesty, and so with angels and archangels, with cherubim and seraphim, we sing forever of your glory. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself, made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. This, our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Jesus is the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Lord, I am, no, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed.
Father of all. We give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our final hymn is called, Thy Hand, O God, Has Died. you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.